guys and welcome to the fish room. I'm Rachel O'Leary and today is Thursday and I am preparing for a decent sized fish order for this week and I've ordered a bunch of really cool hill stream species to come in. So cross your fingers they do. Um, so today I'm just going to take you around and show you what I do to prep tanks for new critters. Uh, this will include getting rid of duckweed, giving a deep gravel back, emptying them most of the way, wiping down the inside glass, and then refilling them. Now, since most of my tanks have been running and fully stocked for the greater part of 10 years, that's all I really have to do. I just need to make sure they're nice and clean so that I can be able to monitor the fish really well. So I have 12 hill stream species coming in this weekend. Um, so I need to make sure the sponges are all clean so they're putting out the most bubble output as possible and make sure that the substrate is removed or at least super clean and thin so I can monitor if they're eating, what they're eating, how they're eating, if they're pooping, what their poop looks like, and their general overall health. So let's get started. This is a tank I particularly like to use for hill streams. Uh, it's a 10 gallon, but it's got a really light background painted on it. Uh, but it's full of duckweed, so I'm gonna go ahead and scoop out as much of the duckweed as I can, remove some of the plants, but leave just a few, and uh, just wipe down the glass and get it going. I'm gonna start by giving it a really solid vacuum. As I mentioned, you know, all the fish that I'll be getting in this weekend are going to be wild collected. Hill stream species, for the most part, are, are not captive bred. Uh, you get isolated times that hobbyists breed them, but for the most part, they're not feasible to be domestically bred, so they're wild. And because of that, I really like to be able to um, Keep a very close eye on if they're eating, how they're eating, as well as uh, their, their feces, their poop, so that I can see if I need to deworm them. Now, there's all sorts of random stuff in this aquarium that I'm going to pull out and honestly throw on the fish room floor. Now this tank also houses uh, carbon shrimp, which I'm just going to leave in here because um, quite a few of the species of hill stream I'm getting in are off wax grazers and that means that they only really eat algae and if micro crustaceans are stuck in that algae, but they're not actual predators. Uh, specifically things like stiffodons can do really well with shrimp. And to, to wash my sponge filter, I'm just rinsing it in my bucket and then it, this one has a bunch of old moss stuck to it that's not looking super fantastic. So I'm just pulling that off and dropping it in the bucket. Now, I don't need to use buckets, but I am in this case because it's also a shrimp tank. Now I'm going to go after that duckweed. This is a constant struggle in my fish room. All it takes is one little piece and it can completely take over an aquarium again. And I just like to scoop it out and tap it into a bucket. And the main reason I get rid of the duckweed in these quarantine tanks is that I'm really concerned about cross-contamination with wild fish. And duckweed tends to stick to your arms. And I don't want to have even a scrap of duckweed stick to my arm from one quarantine tank to potentially be uh, introduced to another. I'm going to finish vacuuming. 
And as I'm vacuuming, I'm wiping down the glass. And then once at least half the water's removed or as much as it'll fit in this bucket, I'll let it sit and then come back and uh, vacuum up any, any detritus that's stuck in the water column after it's settled to the bottom. And I've already done this, did this yesterday in a bunch of tanks. Um, as I mentioned, I have to have 12 tanks set up This one's already done and prepped. You can see I have my blank label on there for when I add the new fish to the tank, I can write down the species and the date. I find this to be really useful for my records. Um, so I have to do this aquarium next, I think. So as you can see, I've drained these tanks pretty fully. Um, and it's a little dark up there, so it's kind of hard to tell that water's actually clear. Um, but I'm going to go ahead and let them sit for a few minutes and then refill them. Um, I cleaned the sponge filters and moved the plants all to one side so I'll be able to reserve the fish easier. Here are a couple examples of ones I set up yesterday. You can see the glass is really clean. The hardscape and substrate is really minimal. Um, Everything's just set up for the best observation. And this is really how I like my quarantine set up. I have one, two, three, four, about eight done so far and about five more to go. While I'm doing this like minute work that requires attention to detail, I also have the big boy tank draining. They're a bit overdue for a large volume water change. So while the 220 is refilling, I'm going around and draining quarantine tanks um, and then I'll come back and refill some of the ones I've drained after that one's done. So this is basically what a reset quarantine tank looks like. Got another one here. Basically have them set up all over the fish room like this. Bare bottom, sponge filter, minimal plants and very clean. Another thing that's uh, due today is sterilizing my equipment. So I have the water set to totally hot. I'll fill up these five gallon buckets. I have nets in this one and siphon tubes in this one. And then I will add just a little bit of bleach and let them soak and then rinse them out really well in hot water again and then let them dry. Uh, one thing I'm noticing as I've collected all my nets is another unfortunate uh, casualty of doing business is I'm really getting low on nets, especially the larger ones. Something just hit me in the head. Um, I'm really getting low, especially on the larger nets, so that looks like something I'm going to need to order pretty darn soon. I have lots of this size, but I like the bigger ones, especially for catching little fish. It makes my life way easier, and it makes things go way faster when you have a big net. Um, so as I said, I'm just going to be filling up these buckets, adding some bleach, flushing with hot water. Some of my siphon hoses have a bit of algae built up. So I'll put some string on one of these bottle brushes and just run them through to clean out the insides as well. I won't bore you guys with watching all that. Um, what I really should be doing is tackling the mess in my office. But I don't, I, don't, I don't know if I'm going to do that today or not. Uh, it has rained every day for a month, so I have not gotten to get outside to show you guys an update on the tubs. I have been out there checking on them. I've had tons of flowers and fry. If you follow me on Instagram, I put update that almost every day. Um, but as you can see, things are plugging along in the fish room. I now have 15 tanks cleared, emptied, and reset ready for quarantine. And I have about five more I want to consolidate to have available for some South American fish that I'll buy from a domestic source. Anyway, thanks as always for watching. Let me know below if you guys have any comments, suggestions, or questions. 
Uh, stop by my Instagram, my business, Facebook, and my website to see my upcoming speaking engagements, my current stop list, and information on all things nano.